Namaste everyone. Welcome to Vidyalakshmi YouTube channel. Myself Moses, chemistry teacher here. In this video, I am going to discuss some of the solutions from NEET 2021. Okay. We have made this key part into three parts. Okay. Part 1, Part 2, Part 3. In Part 1, I am going to discuss solutions for the problems which are from the organic, chem organic chemistry. Okay. Let us see all these questions, how they have asked and how can we solve these problems. Right. Let us see the first question right here. The first question is given right here. What is the IUPAC name of the organic compound formed in the following chemical reaction? Okay, we have to, uh, what I can say, write the IUPAC name of the compound which is formed as a product in this particular reaction, right? Now, what is this particular reaction? It is a nucleophilic addition reaction. Before that, uh, acetone has been given as a reactant right here, right? What is mean by acetone right here? Acetone is a carbonyl compound, right? Acetone is what? Carbonyl compound. If you take any carbonyl compound, Carbonyl compound, carbonyl compound. Uh, with these uh, reagents, whatever we have with this reagent, they'll give the respective alcohols over there. They'll give what? Respective alcohols. Respective alcohols. Okay. If you take, if you take formaldehyde, they'll give the primary alcohols. If you take aldehydes, they'll give the secondary alcohols. If you take ketones, they'll give what? Tertiary alcohols. Now, first, let us see. What is the uh, carbonyl compound has been given? It is acetone, right? What is the formula of acetone? That is CH3, C double bond O, CH3. Okay, CH3, C double bond O, CH3. This is the ketone. This is the ketone. And ketone gives an addition of Lignard reagent followed by hydrolysis, tertiary alcohols, right? Since we have acetone right here, acetone gives tertiary alcohols, right? What kind of alcohols they are going to be formed? could be done very easily right here. Now the carbonyl group uh, turns into what respective alcohol group right there, right? Let me take this one right here. Let me take all the carbons as it is right here. Okay. And let me take the carbonyl compound into alcohol right there, alcohol right there. Now let us take what is going to come here. The compound like uh, the group which is going to come over here is that the nucleophile from the Grignard reagent. What is the nucleophile from the Grignard reagent? That is C2H5, that is nothing but what? Ethyl group, CH2, CH3, CH2 and CH3. Now, when we, when we write the UPS nomenclature of any organic compound, right? Root word plays an important role right here. In the root word, we have all the rules. First rule is that we have to identify the longest chain. If you identify this longest chain, right? In the longest chain also considered as mother chain, right? In this mother chain, how many carbons do we have? We have one, two, three and four all together four are there the root word is going to be what but right now we have another substituent over here that is methyl group our second carbon we have two methyl and at the second position we have alcoholic functional groups right all together the name should come two methyl butane two all if you see all these options right in option three it is not there and option four is also it is not there but in option two and one and two we have two methyl and two methyl right and where the alcoholic functional group is there it is there at second position of four carbons right four carbon means what it has to end with butane it has to end with what but and alcohol is there two volt right that's what the answer is what one the answer is what one first option is the right answer let us go with the next question let us go with the next question okay the major product formed in the dehydrohalogenation reaction of two bromo pentane is pent two in this product formed is based on which rule okay let us see the rules right here which are the which are given right here first rule is Huckel's rule second rule is Huns rule sorry second is Sedgev rule third one is Huns rule fourth one is Hoffman rule right now if you see these two rules right these two rules are about Huckel's rule and Huns rule Huckel's rule tells about the aromaticity of the compound right uh, with all those rules we will come to know whether the compound is aromatic or non-aromatic or anti-aromatic right and we have Huns rule which gives the information about the filling of the electrons into the orbitals, right? And what do we have? We have second option and fourth option which gives the information about elimination reactions, okay? Now in these two cases, right? In these two cases, right? Sage of rule tells that the terminal alkenes are most stable from the elimination reactions, okay? Sorry. Sage of rule tells about the internal alkenes and Hoffman rule tells about what? Terminal alkenes over there. Now let us see whether it, the product which is formed here that is pent to in is internal or terminal alkene right there okay now let us take bromo pentane let us take pent means what one two three four five carbons right there at which carbon do we have bromine over there at second carbon this is bromine right here this is bromine right here now on elimination which elimination it is 
dehydrohalogenation elimination dehydrohalogenation means what one hydrogen from any one of this uh, adjacent positions and bromine gets eliminated right now if hydrogen gets out from this carbon right we will get terminal uh, terminal uh, what you can say alkene and if hydrogen gets out from the internal like inside right from this particular carbon we will get internal alkene over there like this like this okay now out of these two which is the product which is according to the question has been given this this one right what is this one pent 2 in right pent 2 in is what internal or terminal this is internal alkene this is internal alkene since it is internal alkene according to sedge rule internal alkenes are more stable that's what the answer is two the answer is what two let us see the next question let us go with the next question Okay, we have to write the IUPAC name of the given compound here, right? The compound has been given, we have to identify the text structure. Now, before we getting into the answers over there, first let us let us do what we could do when such kind of questions are asked, right? Whenever IUPAC nomenclatures have given, we have to first stick with the root word, right? What is the root word right here? It is 2 comma 6 dimethyl dec 4 in, dec 4 in. Dec means how many number of carbons? 10, right? Let me take 10 carbons here. One. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Why I am taking in this format means after writing the compound we can easily compare with the given options over there, right? We have 10 carbons over there, right? Let me give the numbering also here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. 9 and 10 here. Now, here it is given 2 comma 6 dimethyl, right? At second position, and the sixth position how many like uh, we have two methyl groups over there right we have at second position one methyl group and at sixth position another methyl group right and where the double bond is there in means what double bond it is starting at what position fourth position right that's what between four and five between four and five there is a double bond over there now let us see this structure is similar to which of the following the structures right here okay double bond is there between four and five here 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 it is not there, 5 and 6 it is there, but it, here it is there. A 2 comma 6 position we have uh, methyl groups over there. That's what the answer is 2. That's what the answer is what? 2. Okay. Next. Next let us see this one. Okay. The compound which shows metamerism is. The compound which shows the metamerism is. Metamerism is nothing but what? They are isomers, right? But arrangements of the alkyl groups around the functional groups differs from one another with the same molecular formula. Okay. Now let us see with the molecular formulas right here, with the molecular formulas right here. Okay, now to show the metamerism over there, how many number of carbons minimum should be there around the particular oxygen right there, minimum of 4 should be there, right. If, if it is 3, what happens in the case of third and fourth one over there, both are of same kind only, but it is, uh, we have a kind of unsaturation and saturated carbons are there right here. Let me take oxygen right here, oxygen right here. What do we have? We have CH3 epsilon. 3 carbons are there, right? If you take 2 carbons one side, 1 carbon at least we should keep it right side, right? If you exchange these two also, the same thing will repeat, okay? Here 1 carbon and 2 carbons. Means the, the compound which are going to get it is going to be what? Identical to this one, right? That's what it won't show the metamerism. And this one also the same case, okay? But second case will not show the metamerism at all because we don't have any kind of functional groups over there except hydrogens along with the carbon. And if you consider the first option right here, in the case of first option, what is happening? Okay, we have 4 carbons. 4 carbon means, now if you take the oxygen, let us take it something like this, okay. Let us take 1 carbon here, let us take 3 carbons here, okay. This is 1 isomer here. Let us take the same oxygen, let us take 2 carbons here, here also 2 carbons. We can get the isomers, right, of different kinds of with the same molecular formula, right. That's what the first one can show the metamerism, okay. One thing we have to remember when it comes to metamerism is, metamerism is nothing but the arrangement of alkyl groups around the functional group, right. We have different arrange, uh, arrangements with the same molecular formula, right? That's what these are isomers. Which isomers means what do you have to say? Metamerism, okay? The option one is right. The option one is correct answer. Next, the major product of the following chemical reaction is, the major product of the following chemical reaction is, okay? How do we have to identify this particular major product, okay? Major product, there are different, different methods are there to identify. For now, like, let us see the conditions what are there to identify the major product right here, okay? Now we have an alkene here, we have an hydrogen halide means uh, alkene generally undergoes what addition reactions right. Now what kind of addition reaction is taking place right here let us take okay. Now what do we have? We have peroxide right. 
peroxide with the combination of HBr, it undergoes what? Free radical addition reaction. Free radical addition reaction. Free radical addition reaction of HBr follows a particular rule called anti-Markovnikov rule. Anti-Markovnikov rule. What is anti-Markovnikov rule states about? What is anti-Markovnikov rule states about? It states that the negative part of the reagent goes to the carbon with more number of hydrogens. The negative part of the reagent goes to the carbon with more number of hydrogen. If you take these two carbons, right, where double bond is located, if you take this one as the first one and the second one, or first one as the second one, first one has less number of hydrogen and second one has more number of hydrogen. That's what the negative part which is bromine from the reagent goes to the carbon with more number of hydrogen right here. Okay. Now after the addition, what would be the product right there? If you take it something like this, okay, that is what the product. Okay, at terminal position, we have bromine over there. Double bond disappears and formation of single bond takes place and formation of bromine bond with carbon takes place with a carbon with more number of hydrogens according to what rule over there? According to anti-Markovnikov rule. Okay. Now let us see out of uh, in all these cases, right, in which case bromine is there at the terminal position, right? In the case of second one, it is there at the terminal position. That's what the option 2 is right answer. Option 2 is what? Right answer. Let us go with the next question. Let us go with the next question. Identify the compound that will react with Hinsberg reagent to give solid which dissolves in alkali, which dissolves in alkali. Now what happens when, when we take the Hinsberg reagent first, okay? Hinsberg reagent reacts with, okay, amines actually, okay, amines, okay? This reagent also used for the separation of primary, secondary and tertiary amines, okay? How it, it could be done, let us see right here, okay? Now, if we take Hinsberg reagent, right, that is nothing but what? Benzene sulfonyl chloride. This is benzene and SOCl2, SO2, Cl, okay, benzene sulfonyl chloride we have, right? This benzene sulfonyl chloride react with nitrogen containing at least one hydrogen. Containing what? At least one hydrogen, okay? Now, let us stay, let us assume whether it is primary, secondary or tertiary. Tertiary will not be because with tertiary there are no hydrogens over there, right? It should be primary or secondary. It should be primary or secondary. In this case, what happens? Now, H and Cl together gets out as HCl over there. Formation of new bond takes place between sulfur and nitrogen, sulfur and nitrogen, okay. Let us take benzene here, S double bond O, S double bond O. There is a new bond between sulfur and nitrogen and two bonds are there, right. Now if we have two hydrogens, that is going to be primary. If we have one hydrogen, that is going to be what? Secondary, we know, right. Now if it is, if it is a primary one, we will have one extra hydrogen along with the alkyl group over there, right, along with the alkyl group over there. Now first step is over in which reaction of uh, amines takes place with the Hinsberg reagent right there. In the second step what happens is that if we use the base over here that is alkali base over there what happens it reacts with what the hydrogen okay. Why the base reacts with the hydrogen this hydrogen is very acidic in nature acidic in nature why it is so acidic in the sense now if it is uh, if you see the sulfur over there next to the nitrogen here it is more electron withdrawing in nature. Okay, therefore what happens here, the conjugate base of this particular acid will be more stabilized with the conjugation with what, double bonds of sulfur and oxygen over there, that's what, it is more acidic, right. If it is primary only, we can have the acidic hydrogen over there, which can react with base or which can dissolve in the base over there. If it is secondary and tertiary, it cannot. Okay, secondary can react with Grignard reagent, but not with the base over there, that's what, to satisfy these two, right, okay, to give the solid and to dissolve in water, right, that should be what, primary. Amine, right? Out of all these things, uh, out of all these options, right? Where the primary amines we have here? That is what the answer is D. That is what the answer is D. Okay, let us go to the next question. The diadal angle of least stable conformer of ethane is okay. Now, diadal angle means what the in the case of ethane, right? We'll take uh, the angle between two adjacent hydrogens, right? Due to Van der Waal repulsions, right? As they comes close together like this, right? When they comes close together due to Van der Waal repulsions, what happens over there? Electronic repulsions or whatever. Due to like when they comes close together, what happens? More repulsions will take place, right? When they comes close together, when they reaches the de zero degrees over there, right? When they reaches what? Zero degrees over there. That's what the option is one. The option is what? One. Let us go with the next question right here. Another question right now, okay? Which of the following polymer is prepared by Addition polymerization, okay. Addition and condensation polymer, polymerization are there. Addition means we will be having a unsaturated monomer, monomeric unit over there. 
in the case of uh, condensation right small part small units like water gets eliminated during the polymerization over there the option is to why it is so in the sense the monomeric unit which we are going to have for the teflon is going to be what an unsaturated compound right let us take tetrafluoroethene that is cf2 and cf2 n number of monomeric unit undergoes polymerization at and under high pressure and temperature over there what happens they will forms the polymer okay what is what, what is the polymer right here that is nothing but what that is nothing but what teflon here that is nothing but what teflon okay and okay this is nothing but teflon right what is happening during this reaction addition polymerization is taking place okay one molecule one monomer of uh, like what we can tetrafluoroethene uh, gets added to another molecule of another another molecule another molecule of uh, tetrafluoroethene and gets on what happens addition polymerization takes place and formation of teflon takes place this is because of this is happening because by what is this one addition polymerization this is happening what by addition polymerization that's what the option 2 is right answer option 2 is right answer and let us see the another question here what is the question another question right here the product formed in the following chemical reaction is what is the compound has been given we have compound with ketone and we have compound with ester also and there is a reagent okay what kind of changes the reagent going to bring over there let us see right now now this is the reducing agent okay this is what a reducing agent okay reducing agent over there what it what what is the role of reducing agent it reduces the compound over there okay we have ketone we have esters right if it is strong reducing agent it can reduce both to the respective alcohols if it is mild oxidizing agent it selectively reduces the particular stuff over there okay now if you take sodium borohydride and aluminum hydride like sodium uh, like uh, lithium aluminum hydride over there lithium aluminum hydride is comparatively strong reducing agent can reduce esters and ketones also but sodium borohydride reduces only ketones not esters over there not only esters if we have any other compound like c double bond o o r n r f right any one of these compounds right any one of these combinations cannot be reduced by using what sodium borohydride cannot be reduced by what sodium borohydride in this case what happens with the sodium borohydride is that it selectively reduces what only ketone not ester over there if it is reduces what happens we will get the compound if it is compound it if it is ketone it turns into what the respective secondary alcohol right there what is the secondary alcohol right now here we have oh which is secondary alcohol and the respective groups whatever are there they are remaining same only okay remains same over there okay where do we have this option out of all this four we have in the case of first one where alcohol is reduced but ester remains same over there right that's what option one is right answer option one is right answer let us go with the next question let us go with the next question okay now we have a sodium salt of carboxylic acid turned into what the respective alkane it is used for the preparation of alkanes and carbon like carboxylate group has been eliminated out right okay what is this reaction is known as decarboxylation reaction what is this one decarboxylation okay for the decarboxylation the reagent which are used for the decarboxylation is soda lime soda lime is a combination of okay what is the what is the what is the, what is the reagent we have used for the decarboxylation here that is soda lime soda lime soda lime is a combination of what naoh plus naoh plus cao calcium oxide naoh plus cao we have naoh over there and what don't we have is cao that is option 4 that is option 4 okay next let us go with the next question okay the intermediate complex x in the following chemical reaction is the intermediate complex x in the following reaction is what do we have here we have toluene with chromyl chloride gives x followed by hydrolysis gives what a benzaldehyde right there okay what is x over there we have to identify what is x over there we have to identify now let us see the mechanism how the reaction takes place by that we can get x over there okay now let us take toluene right now let us take toluene right now that is let me take toluene as ch2h okay ch3 is there you can take ch3 as ch2h H over there okay now let me take the structure of chromyl chloride that is cr chromium double bond o double bond o okay cl and cl now what happens is that here there is a new bond formation takes place between hydrogen and oxygen this bond breaking takes place and forms a double bond between carbon and carbon 
and there is a new bond formation takes place between benzene ring and chromium benzene ring and what chromium right now now during these things what happens right now let me take the respective of uh, compound over which is going to be formed over there okay let me take benzene ring right now okay benzene ring there is a new double bond is formed between carbon and ch2 ch2 and there is a new bond has been formed between carbon of benzene and chromium this is chromium one oh group will be formed has been formed here double bond o we have and what do we have we have two chlorine groups right chlorine and chlorine chlorine and chlorine is there okay now again what happens is that there is a new bond formation takes place between oxygen and the carbon this double bond shifting takes place and formation of double bond takes place with the in the benzene ring and this bond breaking takes place this bond breaking takes place when this one happens right there what is going to happen right now let us see let us take the benzene ring right now okay three bonds are formed and there is a single bond ch2 and this bond already broken here this bond is already broken and what do we have o o cr this is cr chromium okay and uh, what do we have we have cl2 and oh cl2 and oh with mole, one mole of chromyl chloride we will get this cut this particular product right if we take another mole molecule of uh, chromyl chloride that is cro2 cl2 what happens is that the same mechanism repeats over there and finally what happens we will get a compound something like this okay let me take the benzene ring here that is ch what do we have okay o cr cl2 oh taken twice right because of two moles right which we are using over there and in which case we have the same this kind of uh, product over there okay in the case of second one we have that's what the option two is right answer the option two is what right answer okay let us go with the next one okay the reagent r okay the reagent r here we have r over there given sequence of chemical reaction is okay in the given sequence of chemical reactions right we have to identify what is the what is the uh, r over there okay what do we have we have in the case of first one Cop, like copper cyanide is there potassium cyanide is there okay if we use this reagent right in the place of n2 what we will get is that we will get the respective cyanide group over there if you use h2o we will get phenol and if you use hi we will get what iodine over there in the place of n2 over there but in the with in the with the, with the when we take the ethanol over there what happens is that formation of formation of the product which we have over there will take place that is bromine here bromine and bromine plus along with this what will be formed hcl will be formed hcl will be formed and we will have nitrogen gas nitrogen gas and the ethanol group turns into the respective acetaldehyde that is ch3 ch2 okay that is what that is what the option 3 is the right answer which can form the product over there which can form the product over there okay next let us see the last question here okay we have to match it right what do we have we have react reactant right there and the reagents are also given based on the conditions given we have to identify the name of the reaction okay what is the first reagent right there first reactant right there we have benzene right here benzene with carbon monoxide hcl in the presence of lewis acid over there undergoes a reaction called gutterman coates formylation reaction by which it can form by which it can form benzaldehyde by which it can form what benzaldehyde now if you take this one right okay sodium hydroxide and halogen together gives NaOH over there and we have a ketone we have a ketone next to the alpha position of ketone what do we have we have methyl group right here we have what do we have methyl group over there this one leads to the formation of this one leads to the formation of let me write the product right here that is R C double bond O O minus O minus and Na plus Na plus the last group whichever we have will turn into what the respective cx3 cx3 means what the respective halo form right respective halo form okay whatever it is there because it, the reagents and the reactant together forms what the respective halo form over there right that's what this reaction is known as halo form reaction this reaction is known as what halo form reaction if you take the next one right this is the reaction between what and what this is the reaction between uh, ester sorry carboxylic acid and alcohol right the reaction between carboxylic acid and alcohol leads to the formation of ester that's what this reaction is known as what esterification esterification reaction and if you see the last reaction right this reaction 
leads to the formation of halogen bond at the alpha position okay halogen bond at the alpha position this reaction takes place this reaction takes place uh, like this reaction takes place in presence of what x2 and red phosphorus followed by hydrolysis leads to the formation of or halogenation of a uh, carboxylic acid takes place at alpha position right now this is nothing but what hvz reaction that is nothing but this one okay what is the right answer over there for first one second third fourth and one in which case we have in the case of first so second third fourth and fourth fifth, first one right that's what option one is the right answer option one is the right answer okay and these are the few organic questions from need 2021 right we are just making these kind of videos into three parts for uh, need 2021 okay after going through all these questions what we would come to know is that most of the questions are ncrt based questions textual questions okay some are directly been asked some are indirectly based on the content which is asked over there okay what is our suggestion is that you just go through the ntrt each and every line of the textbook and solve the problems which are given in the back okay after that if you have any other materials you can go with right and this is of the part one of the uh, key of uh, need 2021 okay uh, for more interesting videos, right, do subscribe and uh, click the bell, bell icon. Thank you for watching.